to the adulterous woman when the Lord stooped down and started writing in the sand, writing things that condemned them. This was one of those areas of the law that they treated lightly. And I will tell you, there's a lot of self-justifying going on today with regard to marriage and divorce and remarriage. A lot of self-justifying. Now, last time I was preaching, I want to make this clear for anybody that's hearing me. When I mentioned talking to a person who had already made up their mind to divorce their wife, and I said to them, you might as well go ahead and give her the bill of divorcement because you've already divorced her in your mind. I was not saying that I advise people to get divorces. What I was saying, and hear me plainly, is that you've already divorced her in your mind. Therefore, you're guilty of the law. You can hang on to that paper all you want till, till death do you part. But if in your heart you do not love your wife, you stand condemned before God based on the law. Now, is that clear? That's what this is about. And that's why the Lord said here in verse 18, Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. I can't tell you how many people that come to see me and want me to advise them about their situation. Does this mean that I'm an adulterer? Yes. Yes. There's no way around it. But you know what? If I heard that, I'd be flat on my face. If that were my situation, crying of the Lord, be merciful to me, the sinner. But there's a bunch of people running out there right now defending their divorce and their remarriage and saying, well, you know, God's merciful. He's loving. You cannot prove that from Scripture. And I know I'm talking to some maybe in that situation right now. I'm just saying to you, bow before the Lord and take the blame. Because that's all you can do. It doesn't make you a second-class citizen. And if the Lord's been merciful, he'll be merciful based upon the blood and righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ alone. But on the same token, I will tell you without hesitation that if you're in a situation where you don't love your wife and you think that just because you haven't given her a bill of divorcement that somehow you're right with the law, therein also the law condemns you. Because it's not just in word and deed, it is in thought. And I'll tell you this as a husband. When the scriptures say, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, my mouth is stopped. You can ask my wife. She's patient with me. But to say that I love her as Christ loved the church, I bow in shame to think that somehow that's how I come to love my wife. But you know what? That's the requirement. That's what the law says. That's what the gospel says. And how we fall short. How I fall short. I've had people, you know, because my children are disobedient, that, that they won't come hear me. Well, you know what? I can look back and think of ways that I could have raised them better. But that's not going to make them children of God. You know, the scriptures say, Father, don't provoke your children to wrath. How many times I've done that? I stand condemned by this law. You cannot say one thing where this preacher, Ken Weimer, does not stand condemned before the law of God in any sense. And if for that you need to walk away, you'll be just like these Pharisees, jeering one for whom Christ paid the debt. Therein is my hope. We've cast out devils in, in the name of Christ. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that this is their drug. God, no, that's in the name of Jesus. And they fill stadiums. Well, read what Christ has to say about all that. They're no different than these husbandmen. Their interest isn't in pointing sinners to Christ in their need. They don't even preach Christ as he is in Scripture. It's another Jesus. And they say to the Lord, in thy name done many wonderful works. Oh, in that 
the slogan of the day, going out and doing good works in the name of Jesus. We're going to open up soup kitchens. We're going to send uh, missionary groups across the world. We're going to build buildings, schools, many wonderful works in the name of the Lord. But what does he say? Then will I profess unto them, notice, I never knew you. Those that God has known, he's known from eternity. Those that are his were put in Christ even before the foundation of the world, that he should come and lay down his life to save them that God might be just and justified. The Lord says to these, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's, that's an amazing statement right there because when you look at what they profess and what they do, it's in the name of Jesus. And yet the Lord calls them workers of iniquity. And the reason is, just like these husbands right here, to do anything in the name of Christ and not give him all of the glory. I'm talking about all of the glory is to be a worker of iniquity. And that's where the divide comes. I've had people say to me, well, I can come so far with you, but I can't go that far. Really? Well, then you haven't come far at all because this gospel, this word of God does one thing, gives Christ all of the glory. 